Hello, my name is Dr Simon Freilich and I'm a consultant in clinical neurophysiology at the Whittington Hospital, London. If you're watching this video, you've probably been referred to have nerve conduction studies or an EMG, which stands for an electromyograph. I would like to explain to you what these studies are about, what to expect, how to prepare yourself in advance of the tests and show you a couple of the tests on myself. Firstly, what are nerve conduction studies? These are tests which look at how your nerves are working. We pass very small currents of electricity for a fraction of a second. Most patients feel these as sharp tapping sensations and they leave no lasting effects, although some patients feel a little tingly for some time afterwards. There are two main components of the nerves that we can assess. The first is the axon, or the wire of the nerve, which sends the signal. Then there is its protective myelin sheath, which insulates the nerve and ensures that it sends the signals in an efficient and rapid manner. We measure the size of the responses, which is proportional to the amount of nerve and muscle present, and use the tape measure that you see to work out the speed at which the signals are sent. We test the nerves at multiple points, and can work out precisely where issues are arising. We tend to test a number of nerves, although the precise number depends upon the clinical question. We use this information to provide an electrical picture of your nerve function. Essentially, we are looking and testing your nerve circuitry to work out where and what the problem might be. Sometimes, we need to extend the study beyond nerve conductions and perform an EMG as well. The EMG signals are picked up with a very fine wire which sits below the skin. It picks up the tiny currents generated by your muscle fibres as they contract. This tells us information not only about the muscle but how your nerves communicate with them as well. Whilst the precise details of what we are looking for is a very complex subject, we are mostly looking for signs of reduced nerve signals resulting from neck and back problems or problems with the muscles themselves when we're assessing the EMG signal. Most EMG studies are not particularly painful, but we recognise that they can be uncomfortable and can be somewhat problematic for patients who are needle phobic. For nerve conduction studies, complications are very rare. Most patients find the studies mildly irritating or a little bit uncomfortable. However, these are very transient, although, as I have mentioned, some patients can feel a little tingly for a couple of hours. We do recognise that some patients find these painful. If this is the case, please tell us immediately and we can try and alter our approach to hopefully make it less uncomfortable. EMG studies involve a fine wire being inserted. As such, we can cause small bruises. For the most part though, these are only small little red dots seen on the skin surface, which disappear very quickly. Very rarely, larger bruises or hematomas can develop following an EMG. If this is the case, please let us know as soon as possible so we can assess this and guide you further. Some muscles can be particularly challenging to study and have particular risks associated with them. When these are performed, the physician will discuss them with the patient before doing the test. In my own experience of having performed at least 20,000 muscle samplings with EMG, the experience for most patients is quite benign and there's very little reason to be anxious. 